Welcome to the next lesson in the Kate Boss project. This lesson is going to be about spreadsheet design and as part of this topic you are going to be creating a spreadsheet with me. If you can think back to when you were in year 9, one of the first projects we started in year 9 was the 9.1 store manager and if any of you have recently done the motor bond spreadsheet that was on Moodle as part of the home learning project, um, you should be absolutely fine and will fly with this. One thing I am going to ask you when you're building this is to use your imagination. If there's any other formulas that you want to add in, just go for it. Try them out, right? This guide is essentially going to show you how to build things, but if there's anything additional you want to do, please, please, please put it in um, and I will make sure you get credit for it. Now, there's going to be a lot of marks up for this section. There's 25 in total because I'll show you the breakdown of them now in a moment. But there's lots of little parts to this spreadsheet. But it is very, very, very easy and I'm sure you're going to fly at it. So the first thing is we're going to obviously create a spreadsheet to track weekly sales. We need to make sure that the spreadsheet calculates profit per item the total number of items sold, calculate obviously the total profit, and if an item is low, uh, we need to trigger a reorder event. We're gonna try and use formulas and functions to create the spreadsheet, and we need to make sure that we are completing a graph. Now you've got access to this spreadsheet, so I'm not gonna spend too much time, sorry, this table, um, I'm not going to spend too much time going through it, but this is the mark breakdown here. And during this video, I'm going to go through every single one of these things so that you can obviously get as many marks as possible. The one thing I'm going to reiterate and remind you is please make sure that you complete the pupil booklet and upload your spreadsheet. Now, the pupil booklet isn't going to be that big, uh, but this one, what I'm after is basically a screenshot of your spreadsheet, make some notes next to it. And then once you've done that, I need to choose a few formulas. If I just switch back to this quickly, I need a minimum of four formulas and I need you to explain what the formulas have done as well, okay? It's no good just saying, this is the formula I used, try and explain it. I also need to see then the graph and then you can make notes of any features. And then once you've done that, everything then gets re-uploaded back to Moodle for me. This is, obviously a version of Excel. Now I'm going to be using Excel uh, to create this. If you haven't got Excel, please can you download it? Um, you can download it free from Hub or if you wanted to use the online version, there are certain restrictions with the online version. So for example, when we create the graph, um, you can create the graph, but you're gonna to have to do it in a completely different way because you can't select two columns at the same time um, like we would be able to in the normal version of Excel. Okay, so to start this spreadsheet, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click in A6. So I'm gonna leave a few uh, rows here. The reason being, I'm gonna put a nice head in there once I've done. Okay, so I'm gonna leave these and I'm gonna start inputting their item name. Okay, now you'll notice a few things. Just as I finished typing item name, it's actually gone over the edge. Now I'm gonna zoom this in a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. It's actually gone over and out to the other cell. Don't worry, click in the middle of the cell there and then you can move it over to make it bigger. And then we're gonna put cost price and then we're gonna put into the next cell over sale price. Now notice what I'm doing. Every time I'm doing this, I'm going to the next cell over. Now you can either use the arrow keys on your keyboard or you can use your mouse to click into the next cell. Okay, you can't just type it all in one big line. That's not gonna work. So I the name, cost price, sale price, and we're gonna work out then the profit. All right, profit per item. We then need to know how much stock we've got at the start of the month. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to put week one, week two, week three, week four. Now, if you wanted to do more than four weeks, you're more than welcome to. You can keep on going and going and going, uh, but I'm only going to do four weeks for this demo. What we then need to do is calculate then the total sold. So I'm going to put total sold. And then after that, we because we know how much we've sold and we know the profit per item, we're gonna calculate then the total profit. I can then work out how much stock I have left because we'll know how much stock we had at the start of the month and how much we sold. So we can work out the stock left. And don't forget, 
part of this, I need to do a reorder formula. So if I just grab my little guide back up here, uh, we need to show if an item's low, it triggers a reorder event. So I'm gonna put reorder in here. Okay. So this is the basic part of our spreadsheet. The next thing that we can start doing is putting items in. Now you need at least about 10 items, right? If you can do more, do more, but I need a minimum of around about 10 items. So I'm gonna start off by putting in an item. Now don't forget we're running a cake shop. So whatever research you've done prior to this, you may be doing cupcakes as an example. You may be doing slices of cake, I don't mind. When you are doing and entering your items though, you need to be thinking of a singular, right? So don't put like five for a pound or something like that because that will not work. We need to be thinking of whole items. So I'm gonna do a cup of tea just as an example. Now I need to think of a cost price. How much does that cup of tea cost the business to make? Now, obviously don't spend too long with this, but be realistic. A cup of tea isn't gonna cost the business five pound to make, right? So a cup of tea, we could say, is gonna cost us 20 pence to make. Once we consider boiling the kettle, the water, and maybe milk, sugar, all that sort of stuff, time for somebody to make it, 20p. How much are we gonna sell it for? Well, I'm gonna sell it for one pound 50. Now notice what I've done here, right? I'm using decimal values. Don't worry that it's got rid of something and it looks a little bit weird. We'll sort that out later. Now, if you notice, I've put 1.50 in for £1.50. I haven't used any pound symbols at all. We'll get Excel to put those in later. Watch what happens now when I press enter. When I press enter now for £1.50, it's actually removed the trailing zero. That's absolutely fine. Right, please don't worry, don't try and put it back in. Um, we'll get Excel to sort that out later. Now, I'm leaving the profit at the moment because I'm just gonna put some items in, okay? So if we do the next item, so I can do a cupcake. Right, so I'm gonna do a cupcake, a strawberry. Now notice it's gone over my cell, so I'm just gonna extend my cells a little bit. So how much does this cupcake cost the business to? make well if we say the cupcake costs uh, 35 pence so I put 0 0.35 and how much we're we gonna sell this lovely cupcake for well we're gonna sell this cupcake for one pound 25 so I've put 1.25 in great if you wanted to do a box of cupcakes fine type it in here box of six cup cakes now then how much does the box cost well again we need to work this out Obviously, don't spend too long. If one costs us 35p, as an example, we could say, well, we're going to add in the cost of a box, presentation, and so forth. We're buying in bulk. Let's say, for example, the box costs us £2 to make. So I'm putting two in, and then we're going to sell it. Let's say, for example, we're going to sell this for £5.50. So I'm putting 5.5 in. If I was you, I would pause this video now. I would like you then to enter at least 10 different items with cost prices and sale prices in so that you've then got a good start to your spreadsheet. And the next thing we're gonna then do is look at stock and so forth. So pause the video now and create the first part of your spreadsheet. Okay, hopefully now you've entered around 10 different names into your spreadsheet. So you've got a rough um, idea now of some of the items that you're going to be selling. Just as a quick tip as well, once you've entered these items, can you make sure you spell check your spreadsheet? Now you can do this either by hitting the F7 key on your keyboard or clicking on the review and then there's a spelling icon at the top which then will check your spelling. Okay, this is on the offline version. I don't know if the online version has that. We'll have a look later. We're gonna leave profit for the moment. We're then gonna look at the stock and then we're gonna look at the weekly sales, okay? So for stock, this is the stock that we've got at the start of the month. So I know this is gonna sound a bit crazy, but you're gonna think, well, how can I think about stocks of cup of tea? Well, think of it as in how many units of tea have you got to sell? So that could be tea bags, milk, whatever. So you need to think of a number, right? So I'm gonna start off by saying, right, I've got 200 cups of tea that I can sell in a month. How many um, 
cupcakes which is strawberry strawberry cupcakes how many of them are we going to make in a month do you think well we're going to make say 50 okay so as you go down this you're going to be putting large numbers in here okay these are going to be larger than obviously the weekly amounts when you have done all of the stocks you can then start putting in the weekly amounts now these are the amount that you sell per week so as an example on week one i may have sold 20 cups of tea on week two i may have sold 10 week three we may have had a really good week 30 and then week four we could have sold 20 say as an example now you can do a very quick mental math check to make sure you're not selling over your amount but if you do highlight these right what you'll find is in the bottom corner there'll be something called sum and that'll give you then the total amount there. So that's 80. So I know I'm well within my uh, stock there. Let's say, for example, on this one, we've sold 10, we've sold 15, we've sold 20. We've then got to be very careful because as you can probably see, if I just add these up at the moment, 45. Now, if I did do this 10, don't worry because we can sort it out later. We may need to adjust some of these figures and I'll show you what it is you need to do. Uh, when we add the formulas in so for this next step all I need you to do is add the stock the amount you've got at the start of the month and then make up smaller numbers then for week one week two week three week four again I'd advise you now to pause the video so that you can now enter these numbers in welcome back so we've now got most of the data in for our spreadsheet so we can now start looking at the formulas now I'm going to go through the formulas bit by bit with you, so hopefully you should be able to understand the majority of these. And I'm just going to zoom my sheet in so you can see it, and it'll be a little bit bigger for you. Now, we're going to start off by looking at the profit. Now, the way we calculate the profit is we have the sale price, and then we take away the cost price from it. So I'm not going to enter any numbers, I'm going to enter a formula. So if I start off with equals and then we put in this here. Now I didn't type C7, all I did was I clicked. And what you can see now is a sort of a box which is going around is showing where I've highlighted. And this is saying, right, this is C7. Now if I take the minor symbol, which is the little dash, and then click in B7, what it'll do is it's then going to give me an answer. Now all you do, once you've typed this formula in, once you type the formula in, press enter on the keyboard and then it'll calculate an answer for you. Now you need to do a quick bit of maths. Does that answer look correct? Well, yes, it does. Now if you end up with a minus value, there's a few things you need to check. Your sale price should always be more than your cost price, otherwise you're making a loss. So if you have something like this as an example, which some people do, and they've got a negative value there, then just check your formula because obviously now that is wrong. For every cup of tea, if we buy the ingredients and everything in for 20 pence and try to sell it for £1.50, we're obviously not making a loss there. So please, whenever you do this, make sure you are doing the formulas correctly. Once you've done that, press enter. Quick tip for you here. If you go into the bottom corner of the cell, you'll see that there's a little notch there. When I hover over the lower corner, it'll change to a black cross. If I click, hold down on that, and drag down, what it'll do is it'll put the formulas in for me. Now, to check these formulas, if you double click in them, it shows you the formulas that have been used. So you can see with this one, look, as an example, we've got C10 minus B10. So we know that's correct. So that's how we work out the formula for the profit. Now we're going to work out the formulas for the total sold. Now this is going to be quite easy and for this one we're going to use a little function. Okay. Now there are other ways you can do this and if you are confident enough and you want to go ahead now at this point because you think yep yeah, I know what I'm doing you are more than welcome to do this and catch up later on in the video. So if I press equals in and I'm going to do something called sum. So sum in mathematical terms means add. So I'm going to do sum open brackets and what I'm going to do with my mouse is I'm going to click hold down and just drag over now you'll notice I dragged over now a little bit so it's gone sum f7 it's got a colon and then it's gone i7 so that's basically saying add every cell including and between f7 and i7 so it adds f7 g7 h7 and i7 together 
And if I close the brackets and press enter, it gives me that value there of 80. Again, if you wanted to do a quick bit of maths, you could. So you could 30 and 20 is 50, plus 10, 60, plus another 20, then it's 80. So again, we know that our formula is correct. And what I'm gonna do again is go into the corner, get the plus, click, hold down, drag, and then leave go. So we've now worked out our total sold. Now you may see this here, um, this is a, a warning symbol. Now, sometimes you will see errors here. They are not errors. Excel tries to help you out with certain things. Don't worry, we haven't done anything wrong here. It's probably asking us, are you sure you just want to add these and not add this one together as well? Okay, so don't worry about any uh, warnings that are highlighted here. Now we're going to work out the total profit. Now you can see this is actually cut off, so I'm just going to enlarge my sell a little bit like that so we've got to work out the total profit now to work out the total profit we know how much profit we make from selling one item so for example a cup of tea i'm making one pound 30 and we know now how many we've sold so what we need to do is multiply the two together now it doesn't matter which way around you do this because it'll just work so i'm going to press equals and then i'm going to click in here which happens to be j7 I'm then going to do the shift and eight, which is my little asterisk. And then I'm going to click in D7, which happens to be my profit. Now, if you've done it in a slightly different way, don't worry if your formulas look a little bit different. But when I press enter, bam, it's giving me the answer there, 104. And if you needed to work that out in a calculator, obviously you're more than welcome to. But obviously I'm trusting Excel now because it's done quite well on some of the other formulas for me. Again, we can copy this down. So if I click, hold down with the mouse, drag and drop. You can see now it's given me a range of answers. Some of them are decimal places, but don't worry, we'll put currency format in on these later. Now we're gonna to have to work out the stock left, which is quite easy. We know how much stock we have at the start of the week, because that's here, oh sorry, start of the month. And we know how much we've sold throughout the months, which are here. So what we need to do is take them away. So we're going to press equals and then I'm going to click in my stock and then I'm going to press minus and then I'm going to click in this one here, which is total sold. So mine now is saying E7 minus J7. And what we should end up with on this one is 120, which we have, which is great. Now, when you do this, make sure you don't end up with any minus signs. Now you can see on this one, I've come very close but obviously a zero is fine, so that means I've sold every one of my items. What sometimes happens is this. Sometimes when people do this, they then say, oh, hang on, I've got a minus symbol here. Well, you can't oversell in this spreadsheet. I don't want you to. So if you have any minus figures here, there's two things you can do. You can either change the amount you've sold in the weeks, or you can change the amount of stock you've had at the start of the week. So before you go on from this part, please make sure we do not have any minus figures here. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to work out if an item needs to be reordered or not. Now, to do this, we are going to use an if formula. Now, an if formula is fairly easy. Think of it like true or false. If it's less than whatever number we choose, it's going to say reorder. Otherwise, it's going to say OK. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to start off by typing an equal sign. Now, I'm just going to zoom this in a little bit so you can see it a little bit bigger. OK, so we're going to press the equal sign and then we are going to say if. And if is a decision and you can see Excel now is trying to help us. It's saying if, if error, if not available, ifs. As an example, we're just going to use a standard if formula for this one. So. What we then do is we put a bracket and you can see now it's saying a logical test. So in other words, you're gonna use a little bit of logic. Now you need to think of a number. This number needs to coincide with your spreadsheet because you need to look at the values that you've got here. It's no point in me saying, if I've got less than a thousand items in stock, then I'm gonna say reorder because that means every single one of my items is gonna say reorder. You need to look at the values you've got. So my most stock left I've got is 120. My least is going to be zero. My most items I got in stock are 120. 
my least is zero. I've got some 16s. I've got a 20. I've got a 55. I've got a 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose something like 25. Okay. So what I'm going to say is if this item here, notice I haven't typed that in. I've just clicked. So if L7 is less than 25, I'm going to put a comma in. And you'll notice this now has changed. It's now gone bold. So what happens if it is less than 25? Well, if it is less than 25, I want to say reorder. Okay, comma, stock, okay. Now then, let me explain this formula before we press enter. This is saying if L7 is less than 25, then, figure the comma like a then, then it's going to say reorder. Now, anytime we want to say something, as in display a piece of text, we need to put it in speech brackets. So if you're on a PC, it's shift and two. If you're on a Mac, it's a shift and the one next to the enter. So if it's going to say reorder, great, comma. So otherwise, it's going to say stock, okay. You always end this by closing the brackets and then pressing enter. So you can see this one says 120 stock, okay. And I'm going to copy that one down. And voila, it's now put the formulas in. So let's just work this out. Why is this one saying zero? Well, it's obviously going to be less than 25. That one there is less than 25. That one's over 25. So you can see my formula is working quite well there. No problem at all. And you don't have to do 25. I've chosen 25 as a number which fits my um, my spreadsheet. You can also change this operator. So if you want to do less than or less than or equal to, it's completely your choice as well. Okay. So, so far we have our spreadsheet now set up and ready to go. Before you go any further, what I would do is just spend a minute to check it. And then the next thing we're going to do now is start enhancing it, making it look a little bit better. Okay. So spend a few minutes now, just check it again, do a spell check on it, hit the review, click on spell check, make sure that everything is okay. For the next part of our design, we are now going to look at enhancing the spreadsheet and looking at different colors and so forth. So there's a few things I'm going to take you through. So the first part of this is if I highlight a lot of cells at the top here, we can then start adding a little bit of color by using the paint bucket. Now, please, when you design in your spreadsheet and you're thinking of colors, try to stick to the colors you've used for your house style, um, which are in test two and try to think if you are going to go with colors, stick to a maximum of about three colors or shades of three. I wouldn't go much more than that. Pastel shades typically go well together, but as you can probably imagine as a teacher, I've seen some pretty awful spreadsheets over the years in terms of color. Um, and now we need to look at something that looks pretty nice. Okay. So we're going to start off. I'm going to use a dark blue head in here. I'm going to then use accents then of blue just underneath. And on here and if I wanted to you could color every other cell in here so I'm going to use a really light gray now I know you could use the modulus function to do this um, if you want to do it you're more than welcome but I'm not going to show you how to do that yet okay so I've just now added something here for usability which is quite nice if you wanted to add in a title, which you can at the top, so I'm just going to highlight a lot of cells here and I'm going to click in this part here, merge and center. And then I'm just going to put cake boss. Now you can use whatever name you've chosen. So if I click in this, you can then change the font. You can make them stand out and look bigger, better, and you can obviously then change the uh, colors and so forth just by using all of the options at the top here like you would in any other software. Okay, so we've changed our fonts, we've made them look nice. We can then recenter it and move it around, that's great. If you wanted to add your logo in, you can drag and drop it in, that's absolutely fine. I'm not going to do it on this one though. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, maybe making the heading stand out a little bit more. So let's highlight those, we'll bold them. And for the items there, we can also bold these as well. If I need to make this a little bit bigger, because you can see there my shortbread now has gone over, I can. And the other thing now that we're going to do is on the currency options. So we're going to click, hold down, 
drag and then we're going to click on that one there right that there is the accountancy option and what it'll do is it'll format things for me there by putting pound signs in and it also puts then decimal points in now there's another thing we need to do over here we need to do the same currency options here with the total profit so again that's like that now one other thing that I would like you to use are the grids. Now we can use grids by highlighting the cells that we want to have grids on and then on the top here in the font category if you click on the little drop down menu next to this grid icon you can then put all of the borders on. Now at the moment we've got quite a readable spreadsheet. It's actually quite nice everything is there and if you wanted to and you want to play around with the grids a little bit more you can now if you wanted to put say the month name on the top here you can highlight these cells and what I'm gonna do is click on merge and center again and this and then I'm gonna put say March like right, this is March's month and again if you need to then recolor it you can use the coloring tools at the top here that we've already used now something that people do like to do with spreadsheets is make them as readable as possible. So if you did want to change the border thickness, you can, and then that then will give you a thicker border just around about those there. Now this is looking pretty nice and we've got lots on here so far. So what else? Well, if we then start looking at additional functions that we could use, so I'm gonna put a min, max, and average formula here. So I'm gonna type in min, max and average and then what we're going to do is we're going to work at the minimum maximum and average in fact we can also work at the total as well so min max and average for this total profit column here now the way we do this is we type equals min open brackets and if i click hold down with the mouse drag drop you can see now it's put uh, k7 to k16 and great that's done so I can see now the minimum value, the minimum profit is going to be 45. If I then do the same for the max, equals max, open brackets, click, hold down, drag and drop. I've got 294. And then if we do average, so you can see these formulas, or sorry, these functions are very similar. It's just I'm changing the function names. Okay, so I'm doing average, click, hold down, drag and drop. Great, lovely, that's done. And if we wanted to just do a total, again, you've done this one, it's a sum. Click, hold down, drag and drop. Just make sure you are putting it inside the brackets, okay? Now we can then, if we wanted to, highlight these, use the grid tools and make it look pretty nice. So to make it stand out like so. Now there's one other formula you could use. You could use if you wanted to account formula. So I'm gonna put number of items. So number of items in the shop. Now because this has moved over, I'm gonna just merge these cells. And then I'm gonna use this special tool at the top here called wrap. Now watch what happens when I click on the wrap. What it'll do is it'll wrap the text around to the next level there. So number of items in the shop, I'm going to merge this again. And we're going to use a count formula. So I'm going to put equals count. Now you can see there's lots of different ones here. I'm going to use a count A, which is just going to count the number of cells that are not empty. All right, so I'm going to count A. And I'm starting with A7, clicking, holding down until A16, and then I'm going to press enter. So you can see there now I've got 10 different items in my shop. And again, if you wanted to, you could reorganize this by making it look a little bit better. You can bold it, make it stand out, your choice. So, so far we've added now a nice little bit of formatting to make our spreadsheet a little bit more readable and make it stand out a little bit more. The last thing that I'm gonna show you before we do the graph is how to use something called conditional formatting. This is completely optional. If you're using the offline version of Excel, you should be able to do this no problem at all. If you're using the online version, I'm pretty sure you can do it. Um, but obviously, if you can't, don't panic too much about it. 
Now I'm just going to open this up a little bit. So my reorder now is a little bit bigger. What I'm going to do is click in the top here by underneath the reorder and on the in whole menu I have an option there that says conditional formatting. Now you can if you want to use the pre-built icon sets in here. I'm not going to, right? Um, I'm going to use the color scales. So if I highlight that one there, click in conditional formatting, go to color scales and then Okay, so I'm going to use conditional formatting. Now, if we click in the top here, where it's got reorder, and then click on conditional formatting, you can see there there's a few um, presets that we could potentially use. These presets typically need to be used on numbers, not necessarily uh, text, okay? So we're going to click on new rule. So what I want to do is basically any stock that says reorder, I want it to stand out, I want it to be red. Okay, so what I do is we look at these. So I want to format only cells that contain. So I'm going to click on this and then format cells. If the cell value is equal to, so I'm going to say reorder. So if the cell value is equal to reorder, I'm going to click on format. We're then going to click on fill and I'm going to then format it as red because I want it to stand out. I'm going to click OK, click OK, and you'll notice this hasn't done anything. Now, watch what happens now when I copy this down, because it's going to copy the formatting as well. Great. It's now highlighted that there as a red reorder, so it really does stand out for me. Okay. So that's pretty much everything there. Now, can you please create everything? Uh, put all the formatting in, and if you need to rewind this video, obviously a little bit, you can. The next thing we're going to do after this is create the graph. So one of the last things that we're going to look at is creating a graph for your spreadsheet. Okay. Now I'm going to zoom out this a little bit. And what we're going to do is highlight two cells. Now, if we go back to our task sheet, no, that's our people booklet. If we go back to our task sheet, I want you to create a graph to show the total profit per item. So what we need to do is this. We need to click in the item name, hold down with the mouse. Now notice where I'm clicking, right? I'm clicking in the middle of the cell. I'm holding down and dragging down just to select these items here, but I'm also including the item name heading. I'm then coming over to total profit and I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna click in the heading and drag down. Now you'll notice when I've done that, it's just deselected this side of the spreadsheet. Okay, and if I try to do it again, look, bam, it's deselected. Now in order to try to do them at the same time, you need to hold down the control button on the keyboard. It's marked CTRL. Now we've done this loads of times in class, so you should be adapted in this. Now once you've highlighted both of them, and they're both done, you can then leave the control button go. And they're both now highlighted, which is great. We're going to click on the insert option. And then I'm going to click on recommended charts. Now, there's a reason why I click on recommended charts. The reason being is with the recommended charts, it'll show me a quick preview. So at this point in time, I can see if my chart makes sense. So looking at this, it looks, yep, yeah, I've done everything right. Now, it doesn't matter what type of chart you do, really, as long as it's readable. So you could, if you want to do a pie chart as an example, and if you want to change the chart, go back to all charts, and then you've got uh, a choice then of doing a range of different charts here. I'm going to stick with the basic stuff at the moment. So if I click on total profit, the top one here. So if I click on the top one here and click OK, what it does is it just adds this in for me. Now, the first thing I always do is I move the chart because I like to have the chart on a separate page of my spreadsheet. Now, the way you do this is I'm on the design tab by default here. If I click on the move chart and then I want it to be in a new sheet, I can call it graph and then click OK. Now, what this has done is it's moved this graph over 
to a separate sheet. So if I go back to my spreadsheet, look, that's still there. There's a few things I'd like to do now to customize it. Hopefully from maths and science, you should remember that you always need a good title on your graph. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna double click that and then a graph to show the total profit. Great. Now then, you can put whatever title you want in there. I'm not really that fussed. There's a few other things we need to do. We need to make sure we have an axis and we need to make sure that we've got a legend on there and you can obviously change the color. Now, built in with this in the design here, you've got some styles. And if you click through some of them, what you'll notice is the design of the spreadsheet will change like so. You can use any one of these, I really don't mind, or you can make your own. On this side here, you have quick layout tools, which by default will add a few things in for you. They don't add everything though. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this part over here, which is the add chart element to show you everything that you need to add. So the first thing is axis titles. I need both primary horizontal and primary vertical on there. So I'm gonna start, if I click on primary horizontal, what it's done is it's put there axis title and then I can type in here, so total profit, great. Now once you've done that, I'm gonna click on add chart element again, click on axis titles, type in vertical, or click on vertical there, and what it should do then is add the vertical one for me as well. So these now are, say, the items in the shop. Okay, great. The next thing we're gonna do is we can add a legend in. So if I click on add chart element, and I'm gonna go down to legend, and then I want the legend to say be on the right side of the screen. Now what the legend will do is if we've got multiple values, it'll then show me the multiple values here. So you can see we've only got one, but it's something that we need to put in total profit. If you wanted to add anything in, any other designs, any styles, click on the format menu and you can play around to your heart's content with whatever it is you need. The only thing that some people do like to add in is like a trend line or a line of best fit. And if you click on the data bars here and then right click, you can click on add a trend line. And what this will do is it'll add a trend line for you. And if you wanna change the color of it, click on it, and then you can change the color there to make sure it stands out a little bit more. And as you can see, it's added in then over here to our legend as well. So this now is the full spreadsheet that I'm pretty happy with, everything is done. What I'm gonna ask you to do is in your pupil booklet, which is here, you need to do a few things. So the first thing is you need to screenshot your spreadsheet, put it in here, and then tell me what you've done to it. I need you then to choose four formulas, any four, and what I want you to then do is screenshot them, put them in and then explain them. The last thing that I'll need you to do, take a screenshot of your graph and put that in, put that into your pupil booklet. Once you're done, can you make sure you upload everything that you've done to Moodle? Best of luck. And if you need anything, please send me a little email.